Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2024, and I'm gonna work through an image using luminosity masks. I talked about this in my last On One video, and I just love luminosity masks, frankly. I think they're the most powerful and the most versatile, most useful, and therefore they're my favorite kind of mask. And all it is, is just a mask based on light values. I was super intimidated by luminosity masks when I first started editing years ago, and honestly it took me years uh, to get comfortable with them, but it's, it's very straightforward. It's a simple idea, uh, and it's done so well in On One. Let's get into it. I've got this photo here, and it started life like that. I cropped it, of course, as well, but it's currently like that because I did some things in develop. But I'm gonna focus uh, the entire uh, rest of this video just on adding filters in the effects tab and showing you how I use luminosity mass and kind of walking through the edit from that point of view. So. The first thing I want to do is get a little bit of color into this photo, and I'm going to get color balance, and I'm going to get this vivid warm preset. And it's too much. In fact, I used this exact same preset in my last on one video, also with the luminosity mask. I'm starting to like this preset, especially with the luminosity mask. But it's it's a really good example of what the uh, what the effect of a luminosity mask has on an image. You can see this preset in color balance, vivid warm is, is true. It's vivid and it's warm and it's too warm. It's overdone and it just doesn't look right. But when you click on the masking icon and open the masking menu, the second little icon here, this light bulb, it says create luminosity mask. Watch the image. As soon as I click this and it creates a mask, you can see that the it effectively faded and made it a lot more subtle implementation of that color balance preset, and that's because of the luminosity mask. So I'm gonna click the goggles icon, which says view mask when you hover. And when I do, this is the mask. This is not the image. The image is not black and white. The mask is in black and white to show you what it looks like. So the key thing to know is white reveals and black conceals. And so the mask is revealing that preset in color balance where it's white, and it's concealing it where it's black. So in other words, that color effect is going into the white parts, which is primarily the sky, and it's not going into the dark parts, which is primarily everything else. Now you'll notice everything's not white and black. There's a lot of gray, and this is the beauty, really, of a luminosity mask is that gray area. These uh, areas have different uh, amounts of that preset or that color look being applied. So where it's gray, you're getting a little bit. Where it's white, you're getting more. And where it's black, uh, darker gray, you're getting less. And where it's black, you're getting none. So it's it's a, a variance in the mask across the image based on light values. And that's why you're able to have such a nice impact, I think, across uh, an image. And now, uh, actually, let me turn that back on, view mask, because I want to do one thing. The other thing you can do is you can also play with levels, which I did in that last video. And I think this is one of the most useful aspects of a luminosity mask, because this allows you to more fine, more finely uh, tune or refine that mask. And so these levels, that shadows on the left, these are midtones in the middle, and those are highlights on the right. So you can just move these around and you can see I'm starting to compress that zone. And so I'm effectively creating almost a silhouette, which means the mask is pretty much just applying at different variances because it's white and gray in the sky, but it's mostly just applying in the sky and some of these really bright highlights, like in the lights and things like that. And so that's what Levels does for you. It gives you the ability to really come in and refine that mask. I can also do some things with the highlights. If I pull this down, you see more and more of that sky is getting white, which means more and more of that effect is going into the sky. So you may or may not need to do that on any particular image. Uh, and I'm only gonna do maybe just a tiny bit here on levels. I'll do some more possibly in the next tool. In fact, I will in the next tool. But the levels sliders, uh, again, very intimidating to me when I first started using on one. But once you start playing with them, you can see you get a nice implementation of that color look, but mostly going in the sky and not as much in the foreground because the foreground was frankly already warm. I didn't really need it there. So. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and get another filter and keep showing you luminosity mask. And this time I'm gonna get dynamic contrast. And all it does, does is add some pop uh, across the photo. But of course it's applying across the entire photo. I don't want that. So I'm gonna use a luminosity mask to isolate really more of the foreground and less of the sky. So again, open the masking menu, click the button to um, create a luminosity mask. And I wanna click on show mask. Now again, more in the white areas, white reveals, less in the black or dark areas because black conceals, 
Well, I really want it more in the areas that are black in the mask, so I need to invert that mask, and now my mask looks like that, uh, which means white reveals, so this dynamic contrast is being revealed more in the foreground and less in the sky. And again, you can use levels to come in here and do some refinement if you want to, to really kind of fine tune. Maybe something like that looks pretty good. Maybe I can pull down the highlights to isolate it even further away from the sky and into the foreground. And so doing those kind of things allows me to add this dynamic contrast just into that foreground part of the image, which is really the only place that I want it. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna add another filter. And this time I'm gonna add a LUT. And this LUT is gonna be the, uh, let's see, color pop and blue. Actually, I'm, that's it, exactly. But you look at it and you're like, oh, Jim, uh, you gotta get your eyes checked. The colors are way off. And they are, they don't look good, but with a luminosity mask, they're gonna look a lot better because again, it's a very subtle implementation of the look of that color across the image based on the light values. So open the masking menu. I'm gonna go over here to the luminosity mask and you're gonna see that fades a lot more gently into the photo. And I think it looks kind of nice. It adds a little bit of uh, uh, that blue cooler look into the sky, kind of a counterbalance to the warmth, but it also adds a little bit to the foreground, which I like. So the before, there it is before, a lot warmer overall, and now with that LUT, a lot cooler. And in fact, you can also just reduce the opacity. I'm gonna take that down to about 75 or so. So luminosity mask plus the opacity slider is pulling that down that look overall and give me a nice gentle implementation even though when I first started it was like some aqua blue teal kind of monster uh, but now it's a lot more controlled and I think it looks a lot better so that's three tools that I've used and now one of the things I like to do of course if you've been here before you'll know this and that is to play around with color experiment with color and I've already done a couple of things with color but for me one of the great ways and on one to go experiment with colors is actually to open the preset menu and I'm going to go ahead and open that. And there's a, a bunch of presets. There's a lot of presets included in on one. But uh, if you open it up, you'll get to the main menu here. And I'm in color grade, which is this one. And the one I like is this color grade nine. Now, as you see, when I hover over it, it really has a huge impact on the photo. And that's too much. But I want to add it to the photo. But you may know this. If you add a preset, watch, when I add it, what happens is it actually adds it in place of all the other adjustments that I already had. So I just wiped out all that other work that I did. So I'm gonna hit Command Z and I'm gonna undo that um, because I don't wanna lose these three tools that I've already applied and masked in and refined my mask for. But what I wanna do is I do like that color look. I think it looks pretty cool for that preset, that CG9. So there's a little trick you can do with presets, which is you just right click and when you right click, you have this insert preset and insert preset allows you to take the presets, uh, excuse me, the filters that comprise this preset and it sticks them in your stack on the effects tab on top of the filters you already have there. So it doesn't wipe out what you've already done. It adds it in addition to it. Uh, whereas if you just click a preset normally, of course it will wipe out what's there. So I'm gonna click insert preset and in doing so, I've just now, I'm gonna close this preset menu to give me back more screen real estate. You can see I've got my three tools, color balance, dynamic contrast, and LUT, but now I've got tone enhancer, filter, and tone enhancer a second time, which is what this preset is comprised of. Well, one of the things I like to do is just come in here and turn these on and off. Uh, and that one was way too dark, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click the X to get rid of it. And now I'm left with a better look uh, in terms of the color. I really like the mood of it but it's too much. So I'm gonna go into Tone Enhancer. I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, there it is before, and there it is now. I like that, but it's too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a luminosity mask on this tool, and boom, go ahead and do that. There you go, much more subtle implementation of Tone Enhancer. And then I'm gonna do the same in uh, Photo Filter. I'm gonna click on that, go into Luminosity Mask, uh, but in this case, I'm actually gonna invert it because I want a little bit more of that in the foreground. And so let me show you that mask. The luminosity mask defaulted to looking like that, which is most of that photo filter, which you can see is in the blues, going into the sky. I didn't want it in the sky because I had some warmth in the sky and I just wanted to leave that the way it was. So I inverted it so that more of the blues out of this photo filter, uh, filter are coming into the foreground. And so that was just a quick luminosity mask and an inversion. And now I have that photo, uh, and I like that quite a bit. And so I did color balance, dynamic contrast, and LUTs 
all on my own with my own luminosity masks. And then I inserted a preset, deleted one piece of it, which was one instance of tone enhancer. But then I took the other two uh, parts of the preset, the tone enhancer and photo filter, and applied luminosity mask. And so as you can see, I'm gonna hit Z to get my masking uh, menu closed. But if you look at the before and after, before, pretty flat overall, not a lot of color. And after, a lot more color, a lot more mood. And if I show you the sliding window here, you can take a look at what we've done to this photo. Again, I did all the stuff in develop before I came into effects and started playing with masks. But that was pretty simple, straightforward stuff, just mostly adjusting the light. But I wanted to walk through the, uh, the use of luminosity masks here because uh, being able to add them quickly and then be able, able to refine them with the levels uh, sliders in the masking menu up here. Really powerful way to do it. Don't forget to consider inverting them if uh, need be. Uh, and then I wanted to show you that little preset trick because um, I like to do that with color. Uh, if I didn't quite figure out or get to the color look that I wanted, I will sometimes go find like a color grade preset insert it on top because it's mostly just color grade. It's not a lot of light maneuvering um, in those presets. And uh, then with a subtle luminosity mask applied, I get the look that I want. Pretty quick, pretty easy, really powerful. That's one of the ways I'm using luminosity masks in on one. One more time before and after. Hope that gives you some ideas for your own edits. Thanks for watching and hanging out, my friends. I'll be back soon with another video. And until next time, you guys take care and adios.